Hey, so this is uh, my attempt to do a part two uh, of the MIT lab for the first one, just getting through the intro. And um, the difficulty that I had originally was getting my CUDA drivers and everything working. So I did end up uh, installing the latest CUDA drivers. 12.8 as well as a TensorFlow Nightly to get everything to work. Um, so one of the things that we need to understand here is the last pieces here we have to use calculus. So the, the other pieces were pretty trivial. Uh, I was able to go through them quite easily um, what we needed to do was build a dense neural networks in one fashion or another, very small ones. So you would add an output layer, and then here you would add the input layer. So uh, it didn't... I made a video of me going through the whole thing, but because I had upgraded my uh, drivers, I wasn't able to... Um, get the right cropping so I apologize there's there's some stuff missing where I went through this and you know it was actually kind of tr trivial and then the last piece 1.4 they introduced calculus into it and the reason being is the way that the gradient descent works you need <coughs> to create a parabolic function so that there's actually something to fall down into. So here, what you'll see um, is an equation that when you take the derivative of using the power rule, uh, x is 3, so you get uh, the derivative of x squared dy dx is going to be 6. And that is, again, to, to reiterate, um, going to be the power rule. So there was some attempt by me to also get um, a visualization of the model that they create, especially when er earlier on I was very much so interested in how this was being constructed because I only saw the output layer. I didn't see um, like the input layer at all. Uh, so this square right here had me going on, okay, well, I wanna, I wanna see, can I visualize this? And that result was actually quite anticlimactic um, in the sense that, you know, the output that I got from this code was not very useful in the, in the sense that, I, I, you don't see the vertices. Um, you know, you don't really get a sense of the interconnection, the weights. So this was anticlimactic. But yes, I did use Grok in order to help me grasp, and because I'm also kind of like, you know, um, not a math whiz and. I just wanted to go ahead and, and confirm everything and have Grok also explain to me everything that you're going to need calculus knowledge in order to be able to construct um, the gradient descent uh, method that you're using in order to minimize loss. And gradient, that's going to be here in the to-do loss. I think I did it in the PyTorch version. No, I didn't do it there either. So, uh, what we're looking for here is a function 
of x minus xf. So xf is our goal. xf is where we want to get to, right? So we want this to be 0. Now, the reason why we square this is also because you could go in either direction, to the left or to the right of 0, and squaring it gives you a positive value regardless in terms of your loss, in regardless in which direction you're going to. So compute the loss as the square of the difference between x and xf. So the, this PyTorch one gives you a better output, uh, um, or this one was a little bit more enigmatic. It says compute the derivative of the loss with respect to x and perform the stochastic gradient descent update. So again, it's going to be the same. It's going to be x minus x underscore f squared. And again, this builds you a, a space in which you can actually descend. So the I don't know if Grok can actually uh, do this. So it, it's giving me a little bit of Pi code here. and some instructions on how to install. So we can copy this, go to our favorite editor, file, new, text Python file, paste it, and we'll call it graph of loss function. Let's see what we get. And so this is this is what I mean. So this is wh why it's important that it's a square uh, because you get a parabolic result, and you can actually descend now, depending on your learning rate, step by step, going down until you find the minimum. So that's what's important to understand when going through the intro and getting to the last piece. So now let's see if we can actually get into part two and understand how to do some music generation. <laughs> 